for Lady Gaga. All right, folks. International Home and Housewares Day 2 here at the Cooking Theater. We have a great schedule. We're going to start it off right. Our next celebrity chef, executive chef at the La Jolla Beach and Tennis Club and Marine Room. You've seen him on the Today Show. You've seen him on Martha Stewart. He's authored his highly acclaimed cookbook, Flying Pants. Please welcome Chef Bernard Gies. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I wanted to do something uh, a little bit different today. Um, you know, first of all, it's Chicago, right? I got out of my room this morning, it's 26 degrees. I called my work, it's 82 degrees. It's like, man, it's cold outside. But I wanted to do something really cool um, and very simple that everybody can do at home. So it's a lemon curd. You guys do lemon curd, right? You know how to make lemon curd? What about lemon curd with a little bit of attitude? So we use a flour, it's hibiscus infused lemon curd. When it comes to hibiscus, you cannot use fresh hibiscus flowers as they are poisonous. So you have to use the dry hibiscus flowers, which are readily available in most markets, especially, uh, I would say, Latino market, you'll be able to find them. They do in South America what they call amaica, agua de maica, which is water of hibiscus, which is really refreshing. So what I'm doing today is uh, actually a recipe that I learned when I was traveling with my parents in uh, Morocco. Uh, because in that part of the world, they also do have a lot of these hibiscus flowers available. So for the dough, I am using a little bit of butter, some sugar, and we're going to put some cumin seeds. So cumin seeds are not really used much when it comes to baking, but it's really, really great aromatic. So we're going to add it in, and some vanilla extract. So using this beautiful little machine here. You guys have KitchenAid at the house? Now this is really sexy, isn't it? You can't even see what really is mixing right now. I love this brand new one. And what I like about it is the color. That pink color really makes your kitchen happy. All right, so we're gonna make this blend it together really well. Now, if you want for this dough, you could do it gluten-free 100% by using uh, I would say the uh, gluten-free flour. You can use also the um, um, almond meal, which is I'm using over here. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna add a little bit of that flour, a little bit at a time, not too much, not too fast. You wanna make sure that your butter is uh, nice and soft, but not too soft. So we'll add all this together. So you want it to be really crumbly, so that's what I'm looking for right now. Nice crumbles. I don't know about you, but uh, with my grandmother, everything was done in a bowl by hand. And it was, you know, you just mix it and stuff, you know. So you can do, do it that way if you want to as well. All right, I'm going to add some uh, eggs, two eggs. And that's pretty much it. So really, really simple, easy to do. And my favorite tool, you guys have some of those at the house? When I travel, I think I have a, a wooden spoon fetish because when I travel, every country that I travel, I always buy one of those wooden spoons because different wood, different culture, different application, but in the meantime, it's a great subject of conversation in the kitchen, isn't it? People come in the kitchen and say, oh, where'd you get this one? So it's really, really cool. All right. I'm gonna make sure that it's uh, mixed up really well. I'm going to mix it just a little bit more. And then you just have to roll it. But before we roll it, we want to make sure that this baby is really resting. So we're just going to transfer it. So you guys bake, right? Everybody bakes? You should. All right, a little bit of flour. So when you're putting the flour, you got to make sure that it's not too much flour, so you just have the flour go a little bit all over the place on the counter, but in a very thin layer. And this is our dough right here. Very important to uh, make sure that the dough really rests. So we're gonna give it about half an hour. So which means the person after me is gonna have to wait another half hour. No, just kidding. It's already done, it's already rolling. Check this out. Roll it really nicely. 
and then you wrap it in a plastic paper, and then you're done. So what I have done is, uh, actually, I'm going to put it just right over here. In the refrigerator, et voila. Now this is what I've done. I already have prepared one tart shell, which has been cooking over here gently. So I'm going to show you what I did first. So yes, you can buy the pie pans, right? Now the pie pans can be expensive. My grandmother, she would use beans. You just use the black beans, and like this, it would be perfect pie weight. So this has been cooking for about, I would say, 15 minutes. I'm going to give it another five minutes at about 350 degrees. And then we'll do the, uh, the lemon curd. So for the lemon curd, the recipe has egg yolks. Then we have regular eggs, three of them, three and three, very easy to do. Then we have our sugar. So the thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you mix those together really well until I would say it's nice and creamy. So you want it really nice and uh, nicely blended. And the reason why we want to do that is we want the sugar to really dissolve. So mix it together like this. By the way, who has kids over here or grandkids? Most likely all of you, right? This is the perfect way to bring the kids in the kitchen. Have them make the dough. Have them just whip the eggs. Super easy to do. But in the meantime, you're able to teach them a little bit about nutrition or a lemon taste. So check this out. Nice and creamy. To this, we'll add a little bit of flour. So you don't want to just put all the flour at, at once. You just want to put it just over the mixture, mix it, so like this, it, it's perfect. A little bit of uh, baking powder. So the baking powder will make the mixture really nice and light. And to this, we'll add um, our lemon juice. And hibiscus flowers. And you put it over simmering water like this. So you want to make sure that the bottom of the pan doesn't touch the, uh, the water, otherwise you will have scrambled eggs. Scrambled eggs with lemon early in the morning is not the best thing. To this, we'll add our um, beautiful, beautiful flowers over here. Check this out. This is what really gives a really nice flavor. The flavor of the Amaika is a little bit tart, so that makes the perfect blend with the lemon. And you will see that the color will change and it's gonna become nice and red or deep color like this, like a deep purple almost. Maybe a little bit more. Measure carefully, very important. This is the only recipe where you can really play in the kitchen. Usually when you bake, Forget about it. You cannot say, oh, I'm going to put only 30 gram of this or 50 gram of that or, or change it just because, because you get in trouble. It's very funny because um, as chefs, usually chefs don't bake much at all because as chef, you are cooking in the kitchen. You're not a baker. When I did my apprenticeship in France, in Brittany, we had to work every station, which means you have to really make sure that you are paying attention to everything that you do because at your exam, you, get, you end up with one appetizer, one main course, and one dessert. So no matter what, you need to know how to do it. But it really helps your career because you understand really what it takes to really be, put a great menus together by understanding the baking process. All right, here we go. I was gonna take a little bit of time. You have to make sure that you have your um, strainer ready. And we have some butter, and we have some little almond liqueur. So the water is simmering gently. So it's gonna, it, it goes really, really fast, so you have to be very careful. You will see that it thickens uh, suddenly, I would say. It gets warm, warmer, 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 and then suddenly. Shoo. So you see it's changing color already. So I think my uh, 
My tart is almost ready. We're going to keep an eye on that. Tart is right here. We're going to, we're going to remove the beans mm -hmm. from the tart. Okay. Perfect. If you don't mind, we're going to brush a little bit of that um, egg wash inside. And the reason why I, don't put, I want to brush and put a bit of egg wash is because when you are putting your curd, that will protect it for absorption. So like this, you have a, re we have a crust that's so gonna be nice and crispy all the time. If you don't do that, the, uh, the moisture will sip. Look at this, it's going really, really fast. I told you it will go fast, right? Check this out, it's gonna really get thickened really, really quickly. Can you guys see it? Look at this, that's it, almost ready. As I say, if you overcook it, you will get scrambled eggs. What I love about this recipe is like when you're making lemon curd, you can, you can also put in little jars. And isn't that a great thing to do is you put your name on it, where the lemon were harvested, and it becomes a part of you that you share with your friends. All right, this is ready to go. Check this out. See how thick it is now? Fantastic. This is perfect. I do this on the, um, at my restaurant. And what we do is uh, we are serving this particular lemon tart for everybody who is celebrating birthdays. So I have some people who celebrate birthday like three times. And I go, you were here like a month ago. Oh, it's my birthday, Chef Bernard. I say, OK, fine, your birthday again. So what you want to do is strain everything. And when it's all strained up, I'm going to leave it right here because it's really cold. You can see it. Then this is what you have. You have this mixture right here. In the meantime, what we'll do is we're going to put this back in the oven for about, I would say, a couple minutes. And then we will be pretty much ready. So when it comes to this recipe, you can use many different um, citrus. You can use yuzu, very different, very floral. You can use a mixture of pink, lemon, and lime. And it comes, comes out really good. And I also have done it with uh, tangerines. So when you do it with tangerines, what's great about this um, Ibiscus is the hibiscus will bring the acid that is needed because otherwise it would be too sweet. So it works out real well. I did it with so many different citrus and it works fantastic. Now, when it is done, this is what it looked like. But to finish this dish right here, what we have to do now, and I'm going to give this to my dear friends over here for pick up. Voila. Merci, merci, merci. Parfait. So we will add a little bit of butter. Don't freak out. Butter is really good for you. I am not kidding. It is so good. My grandmother doesn't have cholesterol. And there is like a pound of butter on the table for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The only thing is different diets, and I guess it's in the genes as well, I guess. But you need the butter. Butter is better. All right, we mix this together. Then we have our almond liqueur right here. Now, almond liqueur works out really well. If you want to really bring a little strength to it, limoncello, orangello, all those cellos are really good. You guys make your, uh, your limoncello by any chance? So easy to do. You know, I have a few bottles in my house. I keep them in the freezer. The only thing is you have to find the Everclear, which is over 100 proof. Et voila. So this will be ready to go. Now, let's see our tart. Yeah, could be cooked a little bit more. All right, at this point, you know, because my, my demonstration is very easy, I'm going to take some questions. So I guess I'm going to wake everybody up, right? First question. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, you can use um, rice flour. I did it with rice flour, no problem. Um, chickpeas flour is very, very good as well. We do, we do that because we have a lot of demand. I mean, you know, these days it's really interesting because you look at the demand when it comes to uh, gluten-free, it is one of the hardest thing. So I have, a, I have a dessert made with chocolate. I'll call it GF. So my friends come in and say, girlfriend? I say, yeah, sure, girlfriend. No, gluten-free. But it's really play on word, you know? And people really love that. And I have three desserts who are gluten-free on our menus. So it's really, uh, really fun. Questions? Other questions? Come on. Yes. Yes. That's the flower. The flower really pretty much tint and give a really nice uh, color to it. Yeah. And that's pretty much what you get. So if you would have, to, if you would be to, uh, for example, uh, wanted to can this particular uh, uh, lemon curd, you will have to make sure that you follow the canning procedures, means you do, the, you do it the way I did it, and then after that you put it into the jars and you have to sterilize the jars. But it's really, really cool. And the best, though, is to do it into no more than, I would say, one pint, because it doesn't sterilize really well otherwise. So just one pint makes it really perfect. All right, here we go. So let's say that, you know, it's cooked, right? Everything is perfect, this is nice and crisp. The only thing that you have to do is you take this mixture. Oh, sure, sure, sure. He doesn't like the heat? He doesn't like the heat. Oh, no way, really? Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> here we go, so this is, you see how, how nice and thick this is already? So you just put it into your, um, to your tartlet shells. And it always tastes better the day after. So make it the day before, put it in the fridge, make sure that you control yourself and the rest of the family to not dig in until 48 hours. What I like about the, uh, the dough, or really makes it really fun, is the, uh, is the spices. So the only thing that you would do now, you put it in the fridge, and then it will become nice and, nice and tight. What we do at the, at the restaurant is we melt a little bit of apricot jam, and you strain it, and it becomes super liquid, and then you just put it right on top of it, so it becomes really nice and shiny. And the apricot works really well with the uh, lemon curd. So because you have been behaving nicely, and we're gonna continue to take a few pictures, I mean, questions, we're gonna pass those around. So I made little tartlet shells this morning. Yes, 200, one for everybody. So you can really enjoy. When it's all set and down, this would be your tart right here. As you can see, the, uh, the curd is really nice and set. So you will have to cut it into nice portions. What I do usually is we put a little bit of whipped cream on the side, and it just is perfect. All right, other questions? Everybody want to know where the Laoyu Beach and Tennis Club is? I can see yes. All right, so I have been working uh, at the Laoyu Beach and Tennis Club, which is located uh, north of San Diego. When I left yesterday, it was 78 degrees, 80 today. Um, we are a private club uh, right on the beach. We have uh, three restaurants, two hotels, and it's a really, really cool place to be. I have been there for, yeah, 18 years, so a long, long time for a chef. Uh, this book over here is a book that I wrote uh, three years ago, Flying Pants. Flying, Flying Pants won Best Cookbook in America. And I have a new, uh, new book coming out, you guys. Who likes fish? Yeah, that early in the morning, isn't it? Give me a tart first, let's talk fish later. Uh, I have a fish book coming out, uh, and it's gonna be global, a little bit the same premises as Flying Pants. So cuisine for me is travel, cuisine, culture, ingredients. One thing that I like to do is, when you get out of, uh, of a plane, for example, you arrive in a different city, just look where the farmer's market is, or local markets. 
because it gives you a good vignette of what the country is all about. Everybody shop there, and uh, all the vendors are really proud of their heritage, so they always want you to taste things, you know? I don't know if you've been to Europe, for example. I mean, they're preparing something, they say, oh, you want a piece? And you taste it, it's because we're so proud of our heritage. So that's a great way to do it. So the fish book will be uh, out, as I say, I will, the end of August, they say September 1st. It is about traveling through 50 different countries and all the recipes are readily, very, very easy to do. So readily available ingredients, very to, easy to do uh, uh, recipes. A uh, lot of stories about all where all the um, recipe came from and where we were traveling at that time. So it was pretty cool. All right, did you guys taste the, the tart yet? Don't be shy, don't be shy. Oh yeah. You gotta get one, there you go. All right, Ronnie, enjoy, bon appetit. All right, few other, few other questions? Oh no, more questions, yes. How did you originally train to be a chef? Ah, well, it started this way. I have an uncle who's a baker. I got an uncle who's a butcher. No candlestick maker, no kidding. Uh, the rest of the family has been in the farming community, pretty much farming business. So it was easy for me to do. But what happened is this. In France at that time, 30 some years ago, we had one day, every Saturday, the kids would have curry a day. So we would try everything. I tried everything. And one day I was with my buddies and we're working on a little engine, you know, and I look at my hand, it's grease everywhere. I say, what are the girls? They're cooking, sounds good to me. So the, the, the week after I went in, opened the door, I was booed out because like, no, no, no boys allowed. What are you doing here? I'm like, no, no, I'm gonna, I, wanna, I wanna cook. So they were making chocolate souffle. You really want to be the talk of the campus? You make a nice chocolate souffle with 50 girls cooking with you and man, you're really good after that. So that says, this is where it started. I'm not kidding either. It just started like this, and then I did my apprenticeship in a two-star Michelin, and then traveled, uh, I would say, South America, I was in Brazil. Then the chef of the White House, Pierre Chambon, under the uh, Bush senior administration, brought me in the United States. So I came into uh, Maison Blanche, went to the White House many times, and then uh, was gonna move in New York to work for uh, Petrocian, took the job, and then the maître cuisine de France called me and said, no, you're going to San Diego. And I go, San Diego, where's San Diego? So I look at the map and I go, oh, it's like Mexico. Okay, no problem. So I went there and, uh, and I stayed there. So amazing, um, amazing place when it comes to um, ingredients. So you look at uh, fruit, vegetables. Uh, I mean, it's unbelievable. We have 42 farmers market a month in San Diego. So we work with, with our farmer's market really close. We walk, work with the fishermen really close as well. So we do a lot of different things. So it's been really a great venture and uh, we're very involved with Scripps uh, Oceanography as well. So working with them when it comes to sustainability and doing a lot of different things. So you know what? I love my life. You know, I love to cook and I love you guys. So thank you very much for coming in this morning and enjoy the samples. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Chef Bernard, yes, everyone. We have his...